What is going on you guys? It is Eric from the Anabolic Aliens. Today we're here to bring you the top five front delt exercises. Now let's not waste any more of your time and let's get into the video. First up on the list is the easy bar front raise. Now you will need an easy bar for this movement due to its different grip placement methods. So it has that curvature in the bar. It is also much shorter and lighter than a traditional barbell. So you're going to grab the bar at about shoulder width, stand up straight, butt is pushed in so your glutes are squeezed tight, your core is squeezed tight, and what you're going to do is move the barbell to an upward position while keeping your arms as straight as possible. You do wanna keep a very slight bend in your arm as you perform this movement. So you're bringing the bar all the way down to the waist, if not lower, if you have really long arms, and then all the way up to shoulder height or just above. Now what you're going to do with this exercise is focus on the squeeze of the front delts. During this exercise, if you let your core get loose at all, you will notice that you will actually lean back and forward as the exercise goes on. You don't want to do that. Stay nice and strict with the form on this one and you will see great results with your front delts. Number two on the list is the dumbbell alternating hammer front raise. Now with this exercise, all of the cues are going to remain the same as the easy bar front raise, except we are moving one dumbbell at a time and we have a neutral grip instead of a pronated grip, so palms down grip, we have a nice neutral grip on the dumbbell. We're going to keep our arms slightly bent again on this one that is going to help save the bicep as the weights get heavier and heavier to prevent hyperextension of the arm and causing potential injury. Now you're going to bring the dumbbell up to about shoulder height and just slightly above if you possibly can due to the flexibility of your shoulders whatever is best for you and you want to focus on the squeeze of the front delt try to prevent your arm from bending any more than is already established so once you establish that bend in the arm you keep it nice and tight and you move the arm as one giant lever up to shoulder height or slightly above and this is another great one if you do not have an easy bar or if you only have dumbbells but it's also a great exercise to include no matter what in your front delt routine Number three on the list is the front band raise. Now at this point in the video, you'll notice that a lot of these exercises are front raises and we wanted to make sure that we show you plenty of variations during this video. So obviously if you don't have a band, you can use a cable and if you don't have a cable, you can use a band for this exercise. So you perform this one with the band by standing on the band equally distributed between both sides. You could do both arms at the same time or you can do one arm at a time like shown here. And again, all of the cues are going to remain exactly the same as the previous two exercises is we are keeping the tension on the band all the way throughout the movement. So as you come all the way down, you do wanna make sure that you have some tension on the band. That way we can be constantly stimulating the muscle. And if the band has no tension all the way at the bottom, you need to adjust your foot stance. So making sure that you're stepping wide enough so the wider you stand on the band, the more room you're going to have to complete the movement and have more resistance throughout the movement because you're pulling harder and harder as you go down. So when you're all the way at the bottom, make sure there's tension. When you're all the way at the top, there's obviously going to be increased tension due to the way the band works. With the cable, you wanna make sure that you are setting up far enough away from the machine where there is still tension all the way at the bottom so you can feel the tension in your front delt before you even start pulling. And then you push the weight all the way up to shoulder height or just above, just like the other exercises. Great one to add into the routine, guys. Number four on the list is the controlled Arnold press. Now with this exercise, the traditional Arnold press is performed when the palms are facing in to start the press, and then you gradually twist as you push all the way through like an overhead press. Now the controlled version is basically the movements are broken down. So we start with our palms in front of the face. We're going to flare our elbows out as wide as we possibly can as we set up for a traditional shoulder press. We're going to kind of come to a stop, so we're going to control it and kind of pause. Press up over the head, completely lock out, then come back down and then bring the elbows back in and then back out again and then up again. Now it is super important that you remain totally tight during this movement. You wanna make sure that your back, your lower back especially, is glued into the bench as the back of the bench is completely straight up or at least almost all the way straight up. That way we can take the upper chest out of the movement and focus more on the front delt, which is what we were trying to target, but also save the back from all the pressure that's going to be placed on the spine through this movement, especially if we were doing this one standing if you do not have a bench. But this one will absolutely light up your front delt due to the constant tension that is placed on them throughout the movement. It's a great one to add into your routine if you've never tried it. Try it with a drop set. That's something I completely recommend and you will be absolutely hosed. 
Number five on the list is the kneeling landmine press. Now this exercise, you're going to have a good deal of core stability. I recommend putting something underneath your knees. That way you can save your knees from being directly on the ground during this movement. As you see, I did not do in this video, but it is totally okay because I only had to do this for a small demonstration. But with this exercise, you want to make sure that you're alternating legs. So the leg that's not, or the arm is not doing the pressing, the leg is going to be positioned up and the same side leg is going to be pushed down into the ground. And you're forming a stable base as you come all the way down with the barbell, hand at the end of the barbell, bring it down to the front delt, so bring it down to your actual front delt or just outside, and then pressing the weight all the way up to a full extension lockout. And you'll notice that this engages the serratus and the lat as you completely lock out in order to stabilize the weight. You're going to bring it all the way back down, keeping the tension in the triceps through, so this is also a compound movement. And it is also a great builder for the upper chest due to the angling of the exercise. So this is a great all-in-one push day exercise if you are looking to shake up your push day. It is also a great exercise for the chest. You can do it with two hands if you wanted to. So putting two hands cupped together and then pushing forward. So there's a lot of variations you can perform with this exercise. And it's a great one to add into your routine if you have not already tried it. So make sure you try it. So in order to program these exercises, what you want to make sure you're doing is picking about two to three of these exercises shown here. You want to hit about two to four sets of each exercise during your workout, and you want to try to stay in that bodybuilding rep range. So for maximal growth, about eight to 12 repetitions, and depending on the individual and their muscle fiber types and how built they are, you can stretch this to about six to 15 reps. Now, obviously, if you want to go for strength during these exercises, you will go under that six reps. And if you want to go for more endurance, you will go over that. 15 reps. That way we're stimulating all the muscle fiber types possible in these exercises and these routines. So what you want to do is make sure you're doing this about one and two times per week is probably the most optimal for muscle growth. And you also want to make sure you do these after your heavier compound movements. So for example, this would be after your standing barbell overhead press, your push press, your seated military press, your regular traditional seated dumbbell press. All of your pressing movements should come first before these exercises. So I hope you guys like this video. If you like this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you click that red subscribe button and turn on notifications, which is that little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you can get all of our uploads every single time we post a video. And if you guys have any questions for me, leave a comment in the comment section down below and we will be sure to answer them as soon as we possibly can. So until then guys, I will see you in the next video. See ya.